Today is Sunday. Thank God it's Sunday. You know, one of the prayers I prayed for the people I saw yesterday in this auditorium, I prayed sincerely that, Lord, do not let these people be crowded. There are two people who came to Jesus in his lifetime. Three people, really. There are people who followed him, and they were spectators, but they were always coming. Whenever there is goodies, they will appear. Like Jesus was feeding them, they were there. Jesus was teaching, they were there. And then they, they saw the blind see, they saw the lame walk, they saw the dead rise but they never partook in any manifestation. Because they come, but they are not part of, the, of Christ himself. And you have them in church. Those are the people who come once in a year. Watch night service, they come. They didn't come to be blessed. They only came to look. When they are born, they christen them in church. When they wed, they come to church. And when they die, Church buried them, but they do not go to where those who are supposed to go to church go. They are spectators. May you not be a spectator in this world. They are the people that they'll be hearing, but they will see, but they will never taste. Then you have the group of people who come to receive blessing, and that is the end of their lives. When they were blind, he healed them. When they were hungry, he fed them. When they were crippled, he healed them. But they have no part in the kingdom. Then you have the third people who have part in the kingdom. Now, those who have part in the kingdom are the people to who all the instructions of the Bible and of Christ is directed to. Those who have part in the kingdom. What I begin to share with you today is... Walking in victory. I told you the Lord told me that I should share with you about walking in victory. The first thing that I want us to remember very, very clearly and never forget is this. God loves you and I. And it is written from Genesis to Revelation. If you look at the Psalm 145 that we always read, Let's turn to that very quickly. Psalm 145. God loves you. Psalm 145. In verse 8. It says the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Okay. Then verse 9 says the Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. Now, here you see the love of God to all his creation. All right? But understand what the Bible is saying here. God has prepared goodness for all, but not everybody enjoys it. God has compassion on all, but not everybody even receives it. But he has compassion on all. Both the murderers, the people who are killed and those who kill them. God has compassion on them. Why does God have compassion on man? He did not create hell for man. He created hell for the devil. We will explore that before the end of the month. If you look at also if you look at also verse 13 says your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to all his promises. I love this one. The Lord is faithful to all his promises. And tonight we are going to explore some of his promises. And it says, and loving to all, all he has made. Reaffirming again. So there are some people who always ask that if there is God, why should there be killing here? And then, I mean, like some say that why should people kill in the name of God? Why should there be all these evil people manifesting? All right? Now, you have just answered, if that's your question, you have just answered your question. Because if there is no God, why would people kill in his name? Well, the fact that people say they kill in his name is evidence that there is a God somewhere. 
But the fact that there is evil all over the world, that is a validation that there is God as well. And if devil is responsible for evil, then certainly God must be responsible for good. I would together now. Now, if somebody says that, um, if somebody says, why do they kill in the name of God? What is the answer to it? Now, if somebody kills in the name of the queen, will the queen be, be guilty of his act? Come and answer me. So, if somebody kills in the name of the government of Britain, because somebody insulted the government of Britain, and then he killed that person, will that make the government of Britain liable for the act? Come on, let's speak. Now, if a husband killed a man and said to the court that I killed him because my wife doesn't like him or because he promised to, to kill my wife, will the court accuse the wife of murder? So, therefore, if, if common sense tells us that a person cannot be convicted for the opinion of another person which led him to the act of murder, how could a sensible man, an intellectual person, say God is guilty for those who kill in his name? Can you see the sense? If anybody kills in the name of God, that is his choice. It has nothing to do with God. If anybody do good in the name of God, it's your choice. It has nothing to do with God. God is good. God has blessed. God loves all men. So if somebody says that I'm killing in the name of the good God, Certainly that person is the one that people should recognize that he does not belong to the good God. If the God was an evil God, then we can say that, well, it is like his God. But the God that loves the whole mankind, the God that is so merciful, the God that is so compassionate, and people said that they kill in the name of that God, certainly they do not know that God. Neither is their act be credited to that God we are committed. You know, sometimes when people ask questions, you only need to redress a little bit to common sense. Because when I was, when I started uh, the field of law, the first thing that we were told is that, look, law is common sense. Okay? That's the first thing you must know. So don't, don't come into law with a complicated mind. You will not get the truth. Law is common sense. Though law does not emanate from, well, let me say that law does not respect morals, Though, you know, a part of the law philosophy emanates from morals or from morality, but law is not there to defend the moral because the moral standard of one person to the other community differ. But law is to bring sanity. I would together now. So, if somebody claims to be a Christian, but his attitude is contrary to God, that does not give anyone the right to say that Christians are bad because that person does not represent the whole community of Christians. Are you with me now? So, but I'm saying that to help you understand this, that none of you must determine how you serve God or how you will not serve God by the misconduct of anybody who claims to be part of the church. I would I'm talking about walking in victory, and I will soon deal with the reason why many Christians are, are flawed by the devil. Okay? But you need to understand this basis that God is a loving God, and God... Is a merciful God. Anybody who comes to him, he does not kick them out. It doesn't matter who they are. If they can repent of the wicked ways and come to God, our God saves. Okay? The house of God is a, way, is a place where two enemies become friends. Maybe you were bad enemies before. You were seeking to kill one another before. But when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, the spirit of murder departs from you. The spirit of hatred leaves you. And the spirit of love comes into you. Anybody who comes to church and does not have such has not met Christ. So you either belong to the other two, or onlookers, or those who escort them, or people who receive blessing, but they never belong to him. Because whoever is in him, his spirit is in that person, and the spirit of Christ in you will make you like Christ. So if you say that I go to church, but you're, you are filthy in your mind, you are filthy in your words, you never, you know, you know, love good. When people are, you know, successful, you feel some 
some hatred or, you know, when we celebrate somebody's success, you feel, you know, uh, different. Uh, but when somebody is, is uh, you know, has a misfortune, you feel indifferent or you feel good. All right? You are not born again. You can speak in tongues and prophesy. You're not born again. Okay? You can see vision. You're not born again. There are people who see vision who are not Christians at all. Okay? And they prophesy. Not by medium. They just know it. And they will tell you things they know. And those things will happen. So it's not by evidence of those things that we know that you are born again. It is the evidence of your character and behavior, the use of your tongue and your heart and mind. When somebody is happy, you are happy. When somebody among you, who you call a brother, have a misfortune, you go and fast for that. That God, this person, I mean, the same condition every year. Lord, you must do something. And the person does not know you are doing that on his behalf. It is between you and your maker. Instead of going to the person and, and validating the person, misusing your tongue, asking people questions about their problems, just with the intention of um, validating them. Are we together now? So the distinction between those who are of God and those who are not is just that. Because our God is good. Our God is caring. Our God is loving. But he disciplines as well. And when he disciplines, is for love, not for hatred. It's to call our attention. Now, therefore, so we agree here from that psalm that God is kind, God is loving, God is good, and he's good to all he has made. Then he says in verse 18, now let me read verse 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways. And this now begins to call for question. And loving towards all he has made. In his righteousness, he's loved anybody, everybody. But he doesn't love sin because he's righteous. Sinful thing cannot come to him. But he loves sinners. But he hates sin. I would together now. Now verse 18 now begins to tell us, The Lord is near to all who call on him. To all who call on him in truth. Now you can begin to see the distinction of man to God. Though God is so loving, God is so blessed, God is so protective, God is so caring, but he is not near to many because they do not call on him in truth. And when I say in truth, I mean in truth. In truth, therefore, it's, a, it's an embodiment of the things I've been saying. If I call on God in truth, I will not laugh at the folly of my brother or as the mishap of my brother, because he's also calling on God. If I'm truthful, I will sympathize with my brother if he has a problem. You know, there are some people who go about casting blame on other people. Yeah? Whereas you have your own log that you are dealing with that you have not even pointed to. Your tongue this year put a padlock in it. Because this year is different from last year. You know, God said to us at the beginning of this year, a few hours ago, that this year, when you think about some good things, it will happen. But the other side of it is that if you sow a bad seed, God punishes you straight away. He will not let you go scot-free this year. Like he had given you many years, and you know, you sow a bad seed, you do a bad thing. Look, let me say this to you. Anything that you can say that can bring confusion to other people cannot be from God. All right? Anything that you can say that will bring depression on other people cannot be from God. Unless if that person is a wicked person and what you are saying is a righteous thing. Okay? Therefore, you must understand those who seek God in truth, they have attitude of regular seeking of God, but at the same time, they have the heart of God for humanity. Are we together now? They see human beings from the spectacle of God. They see fellow Christians from the spectacle of God. And how will God deal with Christians? When a Christian commits a blunder, God will rebuke you. He will speak through lips of people who you listen to. Okay? But God will not ridicule you. There are people who continue to misbehave and they continue to come to God. 
And God will begin to give prophecy, but he will never reveal them. God could have said that you stand up and open up what you did last week. The same spirit that can see other things can see those. I remember somebody came one day to come and uh, one of the members of this church said he wants to introduce to me, she wants to introduce to me her, her future partner. So the future partner got to the door of, of New Cross and then he called the lady and said that I cannot see this man because I'm a wicked man. I lied to you all this time. If I come with you to this man, he will, ex he will expose me. He said, sorry, I'm going. While I was waiting for my two people who will see me, you know, the other person had taken on his heels. And the lady came in and said that, ah, you know, I said, what's the issue? How are you and stuff? He said, ah, no, he said that he can't see you because he had been deceiving. All right? And of course, I've heard instances that people sat before me and God told me the things they are doing that is not right. But you see, God will not tell me your faults here. And I now say, you stand up before everybody and I begin to expose it because God doesn't do that. God doesn't do that. I will call you to your face and I will tell you what God is saying about you. Because the intention of God to expose what you are doing wrong is for you to have a remorse and repent and be restored because as long as you are doing what is wrong, God cannot enforce his blessing and God cannot hinder the devil from destroying what he has given you. And Christians have been casualty again and again and again. Serve God, serve God. God blesses you, then turn away from God and devil destroy. I know when devil destroy. To destroy a house is, is easy to, than to build. You, we build towers. Some towers will do their foundation for 18 months, piling down. Piling down. And then we take another 24 months building it to the, to the top. To destroy it, it costs us less than one hour. So Satan is swifter in destruction than man. But what causes a man to be destroyed? It's because it derogates from God. Now, let me show you some few things. Today, we'll just lay the foundation and then we'll move ahead tomorrow. So, therefore, I've helped us remi or reminded us that God is loving. Another scripture that is quite in interesting to me about the love of God is the Deuteronomy 28 that we read throughout uh, the prayer time. If you look at that Deuteronomy 28 again, it says in the, in the beginning, Verse 1, if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. God wants Christians to be the highest everywhere we are. That's what God wants. God will set you up as high in your class. You'll be the top in the class. You'll be the top in your office. You'll be the top. Any level that you are, you'll be the top. And we looked at it. God continued to save. Uh, as you go down to verse uh, 7, it says the Lord will grant that any, any, the enemies that rise up against you will be defeated before you. God doesn't want Christians to struggle with enemies. He wants to destroy everybody who will rise up against you. Any opposition that stands against a Christian, God is there to stop him. But if you fully obey. If you fully obey. Look at this. It says in verse 8, the Lord will send a blessing on your bands and everything you put your hands to do. Christians are not supposed to do things and then they crash and they regret and they lose. No! The God in you knows where to put your money and where not to put it. And he's willing to tell you. He knows who should be your real husband or wife. Okay? And he's willing to tell you so that you don't take a wrong step and then lock your head into something that looks good and then all your life is in sorrow. Suffering in silence. What brought me here? Why did I not? Why did I not? God doesn't want anyone to be like that. He wants, he wants you to know. You can know your tomorrow today if you are a child of God. Because God has commanded that everything you lay hands on will be blessed, which means that all the accusations we give, demons, devil, devil, devil did that, they are false. <laughs> it's because somebody is disobedient and he's passing his blame on the devil. He says the Lord will establish you as a holy people as he promised you an oath if you keep his command. Then he says, then all the people of the earth will see you and, and call, uh, that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you. Then if you read further, he said that we should be uh, on top and never be neat. 
He says that we should be, we, 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 we will always be on top, we'll never come beneath. And he says also that we will lend to nations and we will never borrow from nations. So God's plan for us is fantastic. But let me say this to you. What about the New Testament? Do we have evidence of this in the New Testament? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 to 6. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us in the heavenly realm with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Now, the Bible says God had blessed you and I with every spiritual blessing. Every Christian is being blessed by God with every spiritual blessing. Now, why did he say material blessing? Because it is the spiritual that precedes the material. For you to be successful, let me help you understand. What, how is a man successful? It is from the unseen, not from the seen. You acquire knowledge. Show me where is your knowledge. Show it to me. You can see. It's buried inside your spirit. The things you learn and you know and you become a professional in, you cannot bring it out and say, this is it. It's buried in your spirit. It is the unseen. Are you with me now? But then, it is that unseen that has manifested in you that put you in office of respect, of honor. And you earn a lot of money because you have acquired so much unseen. So it is the unseen that precedes the visible. Therefore, that's why God did not bless you in the earthly realm. He blessed you with all spiritual blessings. All are spiritual. Once it's, this, once it's settled in the spiritual, it will manifest in the physical. Once it's settled in the spiritual, it will happen in the physical. Whenever you settle any matter in the spiritual, that matter will happen in the physical. That's the reason why you and I pray in the spiritual. And then what we pray for begins to happen. When we keep our mouth shut, the things continue to happen and gangrene and mess up everything. The moment you start praying to God... You will begin to see changes. When we speak to the paralytic and God heal them, it is the spiritual that comes first. Be healed in the name of Jesus, and then the physical, the body responds to the healing. That's why God did not bless us in the physical. He blessed us in the spiritual. Now, that makes it very serious and a problem for us. Because for the spiritual to happen, somebody has to become spiritual and enter into the spiritual and bring it to manifestation. And this is where many Christians fail. Look, if you are sick in your body, I don't want you to admit it. Don't admit it. You know, some people say this, my sickness has come again. And when they say that, oh, you know, people of your age have this sickness. Oh, well, it's age. Not for Christian. Not for Christian. Know this. God had blessed you richly in the spiritual realm, but he has given you all blessings. All blessings. There is nothing you are looking for that is not available for you. But it's in the realm of the spirit. So if it is the realm of the spirit, there are two elements that are involved in this, therefore. The man element and this other element, which is spiritual as well. If God has blessed you in the spirit, it means that the man, a man who God has blessed, must be able to call the spiritual into manifestation. And that is the reason for prayer. Prayer. This year again, we have started every day in this house. Let me just announce this. Our 7 o'clock prayer here in Cathedral now will be 7.30. Okay? It will give opportunity to many more people to join us for 7.30 because I know even at 7 o'clock, many people are coming from work and stuff. And it will give me the opportunity to be with the new cross from 6 to 7. And I can meet you before 7. Now let me say something to you. Your life will be better if you can pray. I guarantee you. you it, look, there is nothing that can face you on earth. Let me ask you. Do you think there is something that can face you and God can handle it? God is too powerless to handle your situation. No, angels are afraid of how terrible your sickness and infirmity and your mischief is. Or the demons or devils that are after you. Angels saw them and they are terrified. You don't understand something. But to make angel work, somebody had to pray. To make God work, somebody had to pray. 
So, what do you think they are for? No wonder. The devil does not care about anything about you as long as he can make you prayerless. He's okay. He knows you will only be backing until you die. You will only be wishing good things. They will never happen. Because the moment God sends it, the devil destroys it. God controls the heaven. You control the earth. The Bible says the highest heaven belongs to, to God, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. If you fail to understand that it is your responsibility to command your life and control your life, you fail God completely. You fail God completely. That's the reason why those who are wicked, they, are, they continue to be more wicked on earth. And they are doing what the devil say. Whereas the children of God are not praying the sacrifice God has from them. And they admit defeat, they admit failure, they admit miserable. They be miserable. That must stop. Somebody say amen. I say it must stop. Look at now, in closing, it says in that scripture, very, very interestingly, it says, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and what? Blameless in his sight. Understand that's in his sight. By the blood of Jesus. He's not talking about work now. He's talking about what we attained by accepting Jesus Christ. When you and I came to Jesus, our garment that is filthy with sin was taken away by the blood of Jesus. And God put a new garment on us called the robe of righteousness. But then we must not stain it again. You cannot continue to stain your robes which hinders you from God and lie on the devil that the devil made me do it. The devil doesn't make you do anything. Anything you do is your choice. Are we together now? Come on now, let's speak. That's the reason why the court will punish you for what you've done. They won't punish demons. Are we together now? He predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ, in accordance with the pleasure of will uh, and will, verse six, to the praise of His glory, of, of His glorious grace, which He has freely given us in the one He loves. So we have the grace to be what He has given us. Tell somebody, watch your mouth this year. Uh huh. Uh huh. If you offend with your mouth, beg the people to forgive you quick. Before judgment. So also, if you bless people with your mouth, rejoice because God will bless. As soon as you sow, you get harvest back. I think I remember God said this to us last year that this next year you're going to watch it out. Harvest you, sow you harvest. Even the government of nations. Now, therefore, God has really blessed us. God has given us everything we need for life and godliness to help us attain the blessing. 2 Peter 1, 3. Make, it says, His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Write it down. God's divine power. Say God's divine power. God's power. Has given me everything. I need for life. And for godliness. So everything you need in this world is in this world. And God has given them to you. You know, I want to be happy over all of you. Because you are successful. It makes me happy. It makes me proud. When a member of my church is successful, I'm so glad. I tell you. I will boast of you anywhere. You know, no one can mess me up. I tell them. Who are you, by the way? You know, my member is better than you. Hallelujah. At least you give me good talk now. Eh? But let me say the fact is this. You can be the best. Because the spirit that is best lives in you. And let me say this to you. Together, if you can cooperate with me, as you labor and run your race with all your strength to serve God, I will pronounce blessing on you. Nothing can hinder the cooperation of myself and you. God has ordained me to speak. And Satan can't stop it. 
So where you are struggling, I speak and there will be release. And I've done that again and again among you. You get what I'm saying? But then you have to play, I'm, I'm, you know, within the rules. It's easy to be, to, be, to be godly. It is easy to follow God. It's easy to guard your tongue and don't get into trouble all the time because of misuse of tongues. It makes people honor you. Think twice before you do things. This year, anger, anger, stop it. It resides in the laps of who? Fools, the Bible says. I don't have time to preach to you today. God has given you everything you need for life. You don't need to go to any prophet for it. You don't need to go to any man of God who just came to town who don't know whether he slept with a woman yesterday, another man's wife. Oh, yes. And when you come, they begin to say, bo, 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 bo. I can see a wind blowing. They didn't see nothing. They're only looking for your pocket, man. And they will ask you, did you come with prophetic offering? If you didn't give, they give them, they will open it and see it. So if what you give them is 10 pounds, they will give you prophecy of 10 pounds. If what you give them is 50 dollars or 50 pounds, they give you prophecy of 50 pounds. And if you brought 1,000 pounds, they say, yeah, pa, 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 yo, yo, yo. <laughs> They are fools, and those who go to them are more foolish. Everything you need for life is right inside you, in Christ that lives in you. I will together now. Now, I will tell you just two more things because we close now. I will stop now at the hour of 7 30. Dot. My message will be 30 minutes. God has, drift, has given you everything you need for life. Now, if God has given you everything you need for life, and He has Bless you with everything in the spiritual realm. And I've been telling you, two people are responsible for it, you and the devil. Because you have to get into the spirit to bring it to happen. There is a spirit of hell that is governing the realm of the spirit before where God abodes. And that is Lucifer. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 12 tells us about that. There's Ezekiel chapter 28. We are going to look at that very, very, very strictly within this season. It tells us about it from verse 12 on Isaiah chapter 14 from verse 12. We will see, I will help you understand your, 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 who the devil is. Now, therefore, your enemy is the devil. He is the one who fights with us. Our enemy is the devil, not man. If your boss pick on you, there is a spirit behind it. Your boss who have been speaking good of you, or lecturer who have been commending your great effort, or your friend who have been talking how good you are, and suddenly begins to say something contrary. Don't fight. Don't fight. Don't fight. If you fight, you are blind. You just play to the hands of Satan. Don't let your confession change to that person, because that person loves you, you know. But that, it just starts misbehaving. He doesn't hate you. He's not the one. Bind the spirit behind him. Without opening your mouth. And continue to show the hand of love and affection. That spirit will run out instantly. What we see is that the man will say, Oh, I'm so sorry for what I did now. I don't like what I've just done to you. I'm so sorry. God. Forgive me. And don't let him tell you you are sorry. The moment he starts to come back to his hand, just say, Please, I've done the same thing before. You know? I know you do love me. That's, that avoids a lot of catastrophe. You see, when the spirit of hell walks through somebody, you are the one that look, is looking for. He wants you to behave a particular way, and he can provoke that behavior by inciting somebody else. And many Christians fall victim. So, good people that God gave you, that should better your life, you throw them away out of anger. Because you think man is your enemy. Especially women, that some, some girls will come and intercept your family. You know, when, if you are such, a Christian man is not supposed to be anybody who, is a, who calls himself a Christian and then he goes after another woman after he's married. He's already in hell. And God can't help him from roasting. Satan can sniff him up any time and kill him and quickly take him to hell. You know, the devil, that's what he does. If you call yourself a Christian and so on, you you begin to go into things like that, he will be making it look good, 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 very enjoying. Wow. That person is gone. Many are in hell today who are Christians. I'm going to take you through it and show you in the Bible. 
But we can have some other people whose husband are not. And a woman was sent by Satan to intercept. Who is he looking for? You, your Christianity. So how do you do? All that attitude that the, the man is showing to you, God expects you to be contrary and maintain your old way of love. Huh? Someone say we go to church together. Yes, not. I've told you there are three people come to church. Those who has caught them. Yes, they are submarine Christian. Every Sunday you see them. If I announce anointing service yesterday, this place will be filled up and down. And I don't want to break my hand over a person who is not useful to God. <laughs> you are laughing. Because to lay hands on the people all over, if I did that yesterday, I would be dead by this morning. <laughs> and I want to lay hands on you. At the same time, too, what is, my, what is my benefit of laying hands on somebody who is not useful to God or to me? It's not useful to me. The work God has called me to do is not useful to it. So he should go to where they will give him the blessing. You understand what the blessing is? People will milk him and take his money and put curse on him. Let him go there. But I was, I was waiting to hear God before I asked also. Because God had told me within the three days that he's going to do that. And anointing is very good when you have instruction too. And that's why before when the meeting was going on, I was, we were worshiping and the power of God was here. And I was listening. God said, go and anoint them. And he gave me a scripture. I said, go. And that's how I said the anointing. But this is what I'm saying to you. Don't play to the tune of the devil. The devil provokes you through another man. A man who had loved you before, who had told you he loves you or he has acted good to you. If he just became erratic, understand, look behind the veil. As a believer. Your enemy, the devil, the Bible says what? Prowls around, looking for someone to what? To devour. What did the Bible say to you? Resisting family in your, in your faith. That is 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9. Be self-control and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around looking you know, like a roaring lion, looking for someone like you and I to what? Destroy Devour means alienate or destroy, terminate. What did the Bible says in verse 9? So we read it together. Resisting family. Standing firm in the faith. Because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. Stand up on your feet and we're going to pray. You are going to pray to God that God give me the strength to stand and withstand every order of Satan in this year. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Tell the Lord, the enemy, your enemy, the devil, is looking for you. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Tell the Lord, don't let me behave the way the devil wants me to behave. Look, let, let us pray this. Every way you have reacted in the past that is contrary to God, that makes Satan happy, tell God to crush it in you. Many times people have provoked you and you have been provoked. You have behaved according to provocation. Tell the Lord, Father, crush it in me, crush it in me, crush it in me. Help me, oh God, not to react when the devil wants me to react. Help me, oh God, not to obey the instruction of hell. Help me, oh God, not to behave the, day, the way the devil wants me to behave. Empower me to resist the devil. Some of you have been tempted and you have fallen last year. Tell God, this year I shall fall no more. Give me the power to stand against the wise of the devil. Tell God. Tell the Lord to help you. Give me power to overcome the devil. Give me power to overcome the deceit of Satan. Give me the power to overcome the vice of the devil. Don't let me fall a victim again. Some of us, through our reaction, we lost good things. We lost good relationships. We lost good friends. Tell God, help me this year. Help me this year. Don't let me lose a good gift you have given me. 
by my reaction against the devil. Empower me to resist the devil. Some of us fail examination because we, we spoke wrongly to a lecturer and the lecturer decided that you will never succeed. A child of God must speak like God. Tell God, give me discernment to see behind the veil whenever the enemy comes against me. Give me the understanding to see behind the veil whenever the enemy comes against me. Empower me to obey the Holy Spirit in my thinking, in my reaction. Tell God, give me grace, O oh God. Give me grace, O oh God. Enable me. Tell the Lord, tame my tongue this year. Help my tongue, oh God, not to, not to offend you. Put a messenger at the door of my lips that when I open my mouth, I will speak good things. I will speak words that will encourage other people not to put them down. I will be a testimony to the life of everybody. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. This is the new year, the year of my transformation. Transform my spirit, transform my mind, transform my tongue, transform my reasoning. Let me reason with the Holy Spirit. Let me act as children of God. Pray as I'm telling you. The moment of prayer, you don't talk, you pray. You are before the Most High God. Plead your case before Him. Transformation is taking place as you are asking God. Some people already are receiving renewal as you are crying out from your heart unto heaven. God is renewing the heart of some people here right now. He's restoring the mind of some people right here now. He's restoring grace to some people. Our God and our King, we pray thee. Parele bondo skeriba shibra la moranda zai. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Do you know something you will say now? Tell God, do not let the devil catch me this year. Do not let the devil catch me this year. The Bible says, my enemy, the devil, prowls around. Don't let me fall a, 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 a victim of the devil. Do not let the devil laugh at me. Help me, Lord Jesus. I ask for your help. I ask for your help. Oh, Lord Jesus, I ask for your help. Tell the Lord, have mercy on me. Let my life be separated unto you. Tell the Lord, every association that will lead me to sin, cut them off from me. Let my righteousness influence everybody around me. Tell Jesus, make me a blessing to humankind. Father, I plead in your name for mercy. Oh, Lord, my King. In Jesus' anointed name, we are praying with thanksgiving. I can hear your amen. amen. That means I agree. Now, I want, to, I want us to pray one more prayer, and then we will stop tonight. It says, he replied. This is Daniel chapter 12, verse 8. He replied, go your way. That is the angel of the Lord. Daniel, because the words are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. I'll be talking very much about end time also within this year, this month. Many will be purified, made spotless, refined, but the wicked will continue to be wicked. None of the wicked will understand, but those who are wise will understand. Look at this. There is an understanding that God did not give Daniel, which God had reserved for your time. Did you catch that? 
You didn't get what I'm saying? Look, let me read it again. The angel said to Daniel, you're asking me this, but it's not for you to know it. He said, but in the end time, many will be wicked, very wicked. The wicked will go more wicked. But then not only that, he says that none of the wicked will understand, but the righteous will understand. That is the wise. I would together now. Look, before you pray, let me tell you. You know, in the, in the YouTube and all this uh, Facebook and stuff like that, you have many Christians who write all manners of prophecy. Ah, Jesus appeared to me and they tell fairy stories. One of them I was listening to yesterday, uh, two days ago. I decided to just even click because you talk about rapture and 2017. And I'm very much interested to know what they're saying. And he said that he had a dream and he saw one of the presidents and they were in the same house, in the same room, and all his family, he believes that the president must be saved then, she said. She said, and then they saw the whole world was in chaos, and then a cone, some cones, like, like a cone, descended from heaven, and they would beam light to people, and when they beam light, they suck people into the cone, and they beam light to people, they suck people into the cone. And I looked at that, and I shook my head. Millions in the world will believe what she's saying. She's talking nonsense, because rapture will not come by cone. The Bible tells us that the archangel will blast the trumpet and it says that an angels, myriads of angels will fill the sky. People will see them. They will invade the whole world. Angels, not, they will be flying all over. When they are flying, people will be, will be ascending all over the whole world. And you see these myriads of angels with the archangel with the longest trumpet blowing and all of them blasting. They are blasting with deafened ears of man. And then Peter says that the whole world eventually will, 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 will vanish like a, a roar. Are we together? You have people who are saying that it is asteroid that will cause the roar. Look, let me say this to you. And I've heard also people who have said that, you know, God told them that um, um, the European Union is uh, one, one world government. Okay? I don't believe in it. You need to know my position. I don't believe in it because I have not had any one of them say, an angel stood before me and told me this, right, this is this and that is that. None of them have that. All of them are saying that they just were hearing in their spirit. <laughs> in the end days, the Bible says that Satan will counterfeit like angel of lies. Are you with me now? The things I tell you are the things God told me or angels spoke to me or Jesus spoke to me with his mouth, not things I think, no, no. I don't believe in that. And really, prophets are not people who interpret what has happened. Prophet will tell you, like the beginning of the year, at such and such a time, this will happen, and when this happens, remember, this scripture is fulfilled. Before they ever happen, none of them was like that. All of them are just interpreting that this union is antichrist. Let me say it finally to you. If European Union is Antichrist. Europe should join it, or Europe, England should join it, because God has said that Antichrist will rule anyway. So if England refused to join the Antichrist, if, let's say, European Union is Antichrist, one world government, if England refused to join it, when we rapture, England will remain here. They will force him to obey them. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because once Christian rapture, no nation is born again. England is not born again nation. When Christians rapture, every nation that remains, either you join the union or you don't join the union, you must be ruled by the Antichrist. So, what sense is in it? Globalization is Antichrist. Who told you that? As far as you and I are concerned, this is our plight. The wicked are getting more wicked. Okay? What did the prophecy say about the righteous? You should get wiser. If European Union, we are part of European Union, what Christians should do is Freedom of movement of people has been with us for some years now. Movement of, of capital, movement of enterprise, movement of, uh, of um, goods. Churches are supposed to have left England and planted churches all over, um, all over Europe. Places in Europe that don't have church. All the big churches in, in England, Church of England and the rest of them, Evangelical Pentecostal, they should have been invaded because the door is opened. And they did nothing. They are saying that European Union is Antichrist. Who is Antichrist, by the way? I think it's the people who, when door opened, they didn't go. Oh, yes. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the earth. 
Anywhere they come together, the Christians in that place, you use that opportunity to reach every soul for Christ. Whether the devil prepare the table, we put food there. Eat the table, eat the food, and throw the table away. <laughs> We're together now. So, in Christ with tabernacle, therefore, you, are, you must not be demon-minded. Some are. I don't want to hear anybody talk about demon. I want to talk about angels. I don't want to hear people talking about devil. Devil did the devil did that. No, what did God do? Don't tell me what devil do. If you don't know what God did, read the Bible. Tell me what he did in the Bible. That's enough. Let's celebrate what God has done. Because the closer you are to God, the lesser you have business with demons. The, if you sit at the table of the Lord, demons cannot get there. They cannot get there. So, for Christ's way tabernacle, what I want you to do is this. What did the Bible say about me? What about if Jesus come tomorrow? What have I done? I haven't done anything yet, so I must manifest. He says in the end time, he, the, the angel said, the vision will be revealed to the faithful, the righteous, you and I. This is how we are living. And he said, Daniel will not know it. If Daniel don't know that thing, I think that thing will rule over nations. Because Daniel was a politician and also a prophet. Are we together? So we're going to pray. According to that scripture in the book of Daniel, that Father, I pray thee, open my understanding. What is the vision of this end time? What is my role in this end time? Holy Father, empower me. Open my understanding. Shall we just begin to pray? Pray for the spirit of insight. It says many will purify, be purified, and many spotless and refined. But the wicked will continue to be wicked. Tell the Lord, I have been purified by the blood of the Lamb. I ask for insight for the end time. My role in this end time. Tell God, empower me. Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the earth as a testimony. Tell the Lord, empower me in this year that I may testify by great signs and wonders. Tell the Lord, empower me and grace me. Use me in this end time to reach many souls. My God and King. Tell the Lord, let my mind be conditioned to your word. Let my life be fulfillment of your word. Let my mouth be full of praises. Tell God, let me fulfill your desire. What you have written about me, that's all I want to know. I care less to know the devil. I want to know you, Jesus, and the power of your resurrection. Hey, tell God, let your word richly dwell in me this year. Let me be a glowing beacon for Jesus this year. My Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' anointed name we are praying. I prophesy over you that the words you have spoken out of your mouth today begins to happen immediately. Amen. Because God told us that this year, while we are thinking, he would do it. As you disperse from here, before you get home, a miracle will be waiting for you. Amen. Every day of this year will bring manifestation in the midst of Christ's Amen. tabernacle. God had told us, and we wrote in the calendar, this is the month of divine visitation. It says, tell that young man, Jerusalem will be a city without war. Every wall of the devil around your life are taken away. Yeah. I speak that the wall of fire will surround you. Yeah. The Lord will come with his measuring line in his hand to measure your life. Yeah. And every part of your life that is lacking or is yet to meet the standard of God, God will accelerate you into them. Yeah. What you ought to be, God will make you that. Yeah. What you are now that is not up to what God ordained, the Lord will bridge the gap for you. Amen. This month of January, you will have divine visitation. Amen. God will visit your house. Amen. God will visit your body. Amen. God will visit your soul. Amen. God will visit your mind. Amen. God will visit you in your businesses. Amen. In your finance, God will visit you. Amen. In the confusion and chaos to come, you will have direction in life. Amen. The Lord will visit you in the day. Amen. He will visit you in the night. Amen. Your dreams will turn to revelation. So shall it be. And so it is. 
in Jesus anointed name somebody say amen somebody say amen jam your hands together for the king of heaven hallelujah turn the song beside you congratulate them in the name of Jesus amen and amen and amen Take your seats in the heavenly place.